All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another one of the CWA community calls. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at uh, virtual leagues and um, uh, some some stories from a few gyms that are starting to put these into place as uh, new operations and uh, new programs to keep their members engaged. Um, uh, as always, we'll go through a really quick Zoom tutorial for anyone who's joining us for the first time, uh, cover a couple ground rules, and then we'll just dive right into our conversation here. Um, so uh, this is a this will be a panel discussion with some uh, some stories of people that are going through uh, setting leagues up and running leagues in real time. Uh, you guys uh, are probably dabbling in this or just thinking about dabbling in it as well yourself. So uh, feel free to ask a lot of questions. Um, you can do that in the question and answer tool and we'll get those questions to our panelists. And you can also um, type answers to other people's questions in there if you've got an experience to share yourself. Um, once we move into the question and answer period um, where we answer all the questions you guys are gonna be typing into that box, uh, you can also feel free to raise your hand and ask a question out loud, or if you have a comment to make and add to the discussion, um, we'll unmute you and you can, um, you can speak up uh, during that question and answer period. And throughout the whole uh, webinar, feel free to use that chat to talk uh, amongst, um, amongst yourselves. Um, our ground rules, as always, are going to be to be polite and respectful to each other, keep any personal political commentary out of this, and um, anytime that you are unmuted, uh, keep any of your comments or answers or questions to under two minutes just so we have time to get through all of the material today. And anyone who's, you know, violates these rules will have to remove, which we still have never had to do and hopefully will never have to do. Um, so joining us today are uh, a few great um, climbing gym workers from around the country. Uh, we've got um, Joey Gordon joining us from uh, the Santa Fe Climbing Center, uh, Lee joining us from Uptown Climbing, and uh, Claire Miller joining us from Grotto. Uh, so these, these folks will, um, will uh, share a little bit of their story. So um, I'll just go in no particular order here and, uh, and call out uh, you first, Joey. Just tell us a little bit, bit about uh, uh, the Santa Fe Climbing Center, about yourself, and uh, what you guys are just jumping into. Well, hi, I'm Joey. I'm the technical director at Santa Fe Climbing Center. I'm also one of the main instructors and one of the setters here. Um, if you don't know, we're very small. Santa Fe is very small, just in town is maybe about 70,000 people, but we definitely have a close-knit community around here. Um, I'm originally from Northern California, uh, grew up going to uh, Vertex in Santa Rosa, and then came here for school in Santa Fe, and then decided to stay. I love it, love the climbing here, and been working my way around this company, uh, or this uh, community too. Um, basically, our connection to... Um, my climb is our main app that we're going to be using um, at our gym. We're just now starting to uh, integrate it into all of our different areas at our gym from the setting side to how can we build a bigger community through there and all of the uh, workouts and um, competitions and leagues through there. All right. And uh, how about, uh, we'll throw you up next, Claire. Um, hi, my name is Claire. I am a route setter and youth coach. Um, Grotto is a small bouldering gym in um, San Diego. Um, and we were using, and we still are using the, the Venga app, um, which we use to run our bouldering league and also a hangboard league. And um, I was really excited to work with Venga because I was, um, one of my tasks was to create a bouldering league. And um, all the gyms that I'd climbed at or worked at before, I'd never participated in one before. So I was kind of like um, asking other friends in the industry, like how they did this. And I was having kind of a hard time with like trying to put our own twist on it. And um, when our, our owner sat us down and had a meeting with Venga, I was like, so excited that they were going to do all the work for us, but also just like a partner for to to work with and um, community engagement is really important. And um, they they've like made it so easy to do to do that. So yeah. Awesome. Um, and uh, last but not least, we'll uh, grab you, Lee. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, Lee Gilbo um, from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, uh, where I own and operate Uptown. Uh, I have a lot of different hats, um, head route setter, um, programs coordinator, 
Um, and um, uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk about uh, our league that we kind of are continuing now and hear um, a lot of different versions from, from other folks around. Um, we, are own, we just passed our third year of being open. So we've um, opened in 2017. And within our first year, we started the bouldering league um, that was in person, obviously, and we kind of had a capped number of people. It was a one night event. Um, and our second season, um, I started using Climbs app to score uh, bouldering league. Um, and so to kind of get rid of all that paperwork that we're doing, paper score sheets, um, it was a really nice transition. And now that um, we have people uh, and a cap on the number of people in the gym at any uh, one given time, uh, it's nice for people to be able to score and use that same app. Um, it's also kind of our route management app. Um, and what they do is kind of build in um, a point system where a given number of points for a number of different things that kind of total uh, to our kind of month challenge. So it's kind of just points to be able to engage uh, with the app and kind of make it more user friendly. Um, this isn't our only one. So we are now kind of open the, to the public and members. Um, although this is member specific, um, before we even opened, um, we used a Vanga app to do our hangboard league as well. So that was an at home challenge um, that had some engagement too. So there's a little bit of a different um, twist on things before we even opened and it was all through social media engagement. All right. Yeah, and then I think uh, a couple of you guys uh, ran a number of uh, Zoom Zoom workouts and yoga classes and all of those things as well during the closure. Uh, how did that um, How did that experience help um, kind of form the the program your way of looking at programming with uh, virtual leagues going forward? I'll start with you, Claire. <laughs> um, well, so we were trying to do like a lot of at home challenges where. Like I would send in videos and it'd be like Claire challenge and it'd be posted on Instagram where like I'd be doing something silly in my house, like, like trying to climb around the table or like trying to like, like put clothes on while I was like hanging from a hangboard. So we were kind of like already doing these like itty bitty challenges that like staff would send in. And so when we introduced, we also did hangboard league through Vanga. When we did that, it was sort of just a, like a bigger end of the introduction into like, we're going to start using this app to do like more challenges. So it act like our, our um, at home challenges that the staff would do like led into using like the um, virtual apps um, like seamlessly because we were also using social media as like an advocating platform or being like all of our little videos were on Instagram and then when we started using Venga all of our like um, publicizing it was on Instagram so people were always on their phone anyway because they're stuck at home with nothing to do so then that was like we had a lot of people join immediately because we used social media and that just to get them in there so okay. yeah and how about for your uh, how about for you joey um you, if i heard correctly you guys didn't do any um climbing specific uh like challenges or leagues during the closure but just more like on the training and fitness side mm -hmm. mainly so our we had three classes we were doing a free yoga class a free kettlebell class and a hangboarding class so we had different levels from an introduction like level one, level two, level three um, for the hangboarding. Um, we didn't run any like competitions or challenges with that. It was mainly um, if you wanted to come join a class, come join a class and see kind of uh, what our instructors like to do. Mainly we kind of were going through all of our instructors and we're just like, what is the thing that you have the most fun doing? And then we kind of made classes around those just so we can kind of join the community a little bit and saying, hey, we're still here, even though we're closed, you can't climb. You can be a part of what we're doing, what we're trying to do. We had all the staff join a lot of the classes too, just so everyone can just see that we're still there. And then just like with what Claire said, it's just leads right into a lot of um, these climbing apps and just like what's baked into them. It's just, you can expand so much just on a simple Zoom class. You can change it up for challenges and everything you can possibly imagine. They're very, uh, very open, I could say. Yeah. And have you continued uh, those classes, those virtual classes since reopening as well? 
No, we have we stopped on those, but just now we are we opened in June, and we're just about to change up since we're just taking on my climb right now. Um, we're changing up a lot of our stuff, and we might be joining some of those Zoom things again. But mainly, we're gonna try to see how much um, we can pull into gym for right now. Cool. And yeah, what was your experience like, Lee? It sounded like you had a lot going on uh, during the closure as well. Um, yeah. So. Um, we had a couple of challenges, um, that we presented to members, but none of them were, um, sort of live zoom versions. We, I pre-recorded kind of a video that had, was a 30 day challenge, um, that included, uh, push up squats, general fitness stuff, a burpee challenge. It was kind of 30 days at your own, you know, at your own pace. Um, and our yoga classes were also pre-recorded. So, um, every week for a month, we kind of had one of our instructors record a 20 minute video um, that we put on social media. And we thought that that was a better way to do it because people could do it on their own time. They didn't have to log in at the specific time and they can go back and do them. They're still on our Facebook page. So people, um, if they're not ready to come back into the gym or um, attend a yoga class, they can do those at home. Uh, so we, we thought that was kind of long term um, better end for those classes. Um, the Vanga challenge, the hangboard challenge was really nice because, um, we kind of approached them. We had a couple of zoom calls with the, um, with the developers and the owners of Vanga, uh, really nice guys and really motivated. Um, and we kind of set up, um, our, I think we did a 10 day hangboard challenge and that was also very fitness oriented. So, um, they were super accommodating with types of hangboards and even had a, um, a, um, division with, that was just door frame. So if you only had a two by four or a door frame to hang on, um, you were still able to participate. Um, and, um, they, you know, encourage people. One of the challenges was record a video, um, and, and post it, uh, to the app. Um, there were some push up and, uh, running challenges and things. Um, and people, who were really involved, like the, the people who were on it for all 10 days and doing it, were doing the max number of push-ups for the day and the max number of pull-ups. Um, so it was really kind of encouraging to at least connect with the other members of the gym who were looking for something to do. Um, once we opened in May, um, we were really focused on um, kind of in-gym operations too. So we um, we're making sure the facility was clean and that our check-in process was sound and that everybody could realistically climb with wearing face masks the whole time, hundred percent of the time. Um, and then, um, we, like I said, we had kind of built in all of our routes in the entire gym into the climbs app. So we already had that kind of on the table. Um, and the owner and developer of climbs, um, said it'd be really easy just to do a, a similar point system for uh, that we did for Boulder League. And so that started in August. There's a 30 day challenge and there's like a dozen different ways to earn points through the app. And it's really just using the app. So it's, if you comment on a route, if you give a route different stars, you get points for it. If you tick a route or a red point a route, all these different things, um, you get points that add up. Um, so before, yeah, before it was a little, a little different. Um, a lot of our stuff was pre-recorded. Yeah. Um, and, and I'll, I'll start uh, with you uh, <laughs> since you're up here, uh, Lee. Uh, how, how did you um, market that league to your members? Uh, did you have a lot of people already in the app and in that ecosystem from, from the previous competition or was it a whole new? Yeah, no, I mean, a, a lot of our uh, members that had participated in league were uh, the ones that, partic that participated in the, uh, the climbs challenge. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of, uh, return members. Um, we did a few posts in our social media, so a few stories kind of like on, uh, okay. This is like when I'm at gym and I'm ticking routes. Um, so we kind of did a little video snippet, um, of that. Um, and then we typically kind of pair that with flyers around the gym. Um, so people who are in the gym already will see uh, and ask questions and stat uh, to the stat and things. Um, but a lot of social media. Um, okay. Uh, 
Um, and then, yeah, you, you, you're, a, you didn't have any pre-existing um, virtual members in, in your gym, Claire. So how did you go about uh, pitching this idea and getting people on board uh, during the closure? Because that's really when it sounds like you started getting people comfortable with this ecosystem uh, with Vanga, which you're using. Yeah, so um, when we were closed, we definitely used um, Instagram like quite a bit to um, get people involved with Hangboard League. And with Hangboard League, we didn't have as many. We probably had like around maybe like 15, 20 participants. Um, but when we opened back up and we started doing Bouldering League, that was also, again, like a lot of social media, but also word of mouth. We didn't put um, any flyers up in the gym, which I, I clearly remember because I was like, we should probably do this. So I tried to um, like tell as many people as I could like to do it. Um, I was really excited about Venga because like one, it like helped do the bouldering league, but two on the route sitters end, you were allowed to like um, see what people, when people would send a climb, they could say um, what they thought the true difficulty was. And I really liked that feature. So I also was just trying to get people to do it just so that I could see what people had to say um, about the difficulty and if we were stiff or if we were soft. Um, but I just, I, I really came out of my shell and I very, t I talked to a lot of people because I wanted them to do it. So um so yeah, that was that was how we got that. All right. And then uh, for you, Joe, you're like right in the process of of launching your first uh, full league and getting the message out to customers. Um, what kind of messaging are you using to to do that? So our big thing is Instagram. We're most active on our Instagram right now. Um, Instagram and Facebook. They're kind of just linked right now. Um, a lot of it's mainly flyers, word of mouth in the gym. Um, the QR codes on all the climbs kind of just get people talking and it's just like, hey, what is this? So they kind of come up to the front desk and ask. And uh, our customers mainly notice that we're really just hopping on more technology because uh, we just got a moon board and a tension board installed just before the pandemic. And we're just kind of introducing people to even like the Rock Gym Pro app and we have that fully uh, set up so it's really easy to make a reservation in the gym to see how many people are in the gym just all from their app and they can just have their phone with them and it's kind of their other connection to the gym right and then i'll throw this question out just to all of you guys whoever wants to answer it so you know heard a lot of social media as the vehicle for this marketing message um, what kind of messages have you found to be most successful with getting people on um, is it more about fitness more about the community more about the the challenge are you guys offering prizes um, yeah what, what what message have you found to be most successful <laughs> anyone can jump in on that <laughs> um, I'll, I'll just say that the biggest challenge is getting people to actually um, record their scores and use the app. Um, we, we had a bunch of kind of backstock prizes from events that we didn't put on from March uh, to May. And so we had stuff kind of from Petzl and Metolius and all these, um, all, our, all our different vendors um, that we were able to give away and we did promote those, but it, until people actually won, they weren't really focused on the prizes. Um, I think the big thing that um, that did motivate uh, members was the tracking of kind of their progress of routes too. And so once they realized that I don't need a journal um, to keep track and see progress of the climbs that I'm doing, but all I need to do is kind of um, tap a few buttons um, on my phone while I'm climbing or after my session's done and I can go back and look at my progress there. Um, and so I think people, once they're, once they're on it and realize how useful it is for them to go back and look, um, that was, that's kind of a big, bigger motivation. Um, and people sharing it obviously face-to-face -to -face too. And so, um, so we would, I would see a couple members in the gym be um, explaining what they're doing to other members as they're using it. Um. All right. It, yeah, you know, building on that, do you find do you find a lot of people climbing with their cell phones? I know there's we see questions about that all the time and speculation about what people are actually doing. Do you find people entering that data real time or more like after their session ends? Um, yeah, most people don't. They'd rather not climb with their phone, um, from what I've seen. And so, um, so at the end of their session before they're leaving, they'll walk around and they'll tick the routes that they've done. Um, at the end, that's kind of more often what I see. 
Um, and it, it's a little tough to explain, but Climbs has an app and a website that has slightly different um, features and usability. And so you can actually go back and see a lot more data through the website um, portal um, to uptown.climbs. Um, so I've got to explain that a little bit and say, you can edit your, your tick list and you can go back and, um, and see all the routes in the gym a little bit uh, easier and more fluid um, through the website. Yeah, what's what's what have you observed, Claire? Uh, similar dynamic? Yeah. Um, so with the uh, the the challenges aspect, um, or what made people excited? I, I think it was very much. We did have prizes. We did offer prizes. But what I saw was uh, what made most people ex excited was um, the kind of competition between friends. Like everyone, they would like when there was a new set, they'd be like, "I'm gonna flash it," and like there were. It was like more of a like, "Hey, hey like I did this and you didn't." Um, and that was kind of what we wanted was to like get the community excited again about like being in the gym and also well, social distance, um, but also like being with their friends again and like ha adding this like kind of competitiveness to like their session that was there before when you like, climb with your friends, but now it's a little bit more serious because now you can mark it in an app. Um, and like Lee was saying, like it does like allow people to, people were really excited about tracking their progress. Um, and uh, with the, the climbing uh, with their phones, the only time I've seen like a phone fall out of someone's pocket was like the person was wearing rental shoes. So they weren't in the know yet. Um, but what I see a lot of people do is put their like phone underneath their chalk bag. So when they, after they like do the climb or like after an attempt, they just go back to their chalk bag and then they're on their phone, like and either add it or, or who knows, playing games or whatever. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were chatting earlier and uh, Joey had this, uh, a great idea that they did in Santa Fe of um, just doing a practice league. So anyone who hasn't dabbled in this uh, yet, who's listening, I thought that was a you know fantastic idea of doing a practice league with just the employees. Uh, when you were experimenting with that first uh, league and, and just your staff, uh, Joey, did you try different methods in terms of that data entry, like before, during the climb? Um, what? So the first thing we figured out was just how to share QR codes between climbs because my climb didn't have a way to do that. And we're very much about uh, cutting all of our waste as much as we can here. Um, so we didn't want to keep having to re-laminate new tags, share them. So we first figured that out. We figured out some workarounds and then we sent some information off to them and they're going to be updating their app on trying to make that a little bit easier for gyms. Um, the second part was mainly, I'll just speak from my own experience using it. It was just um, how, what, what do we want to see people doing in the gym? Like going back to the question with uh, having your phones or not while climbing. Um, I don't like having my phone while climbing. I don't like getting chalk all over. It's an expensive phone. It's just not fun having to clean it all the time. And you're just worrying it's going to break. I spent a lot of money on that thing. Um, I was just thinking of like, what's the future of this? And like, how can we make this a little more streamlined? I don't like being taken out of, of, you're in the zone while you're climbing, you're kind of there, it's you in the wall and it's just, you know, you're trying to focus on what you're doing. I don't like having to go back out of, onto my phone because that's like, you know, we're trying to get away from our phones a little bit sometimes. Um, a lot of people like having fitness trackers on. A lot of them, Apple Watch has NFC technology. I'm just thinking of a way of like, instead of having to get out my phone, scan a tag or do it at the end while you're climbing or you just finish your climb, you just tap your wrist against the wall and then it just sends it right to your phone and then you can just see everything right at the end. So I was gonna talk and see if there's some uh, apps that are using that already. I have seen some around that are trying to implement some NFC stuff, but it's like, how can we get technology away from the chalk having to clean it? A lot of people don't clean their phones. They should clean their phones. Um, what's the easiest way so you can just climb, log your climbs, and it's just there ready to go once you're done. And then that can just tie into all the other fitness stuff that's in hundreds of apps these days. Cool. Um, you know, going back to uh, the, the little discussion we had around marketing, are, are any of your leagues uh, group-based or are they all individual? Uh, go for it, Claire. Yeah, um, so ours, there was the option when we did our bouldering league to have it like an individual or a um, team. And we specifically wanted it to be a team to get the community engagement back in there and get people excited again with their friends. Um, the hangboard league was indiv individual and I, I don't recall if it was the option you could do teams or, 
or um, individual, but that was when we were at home. So it made sense just to have it be an individual um, competition. But uh, yeah, our bouldering league was team-based um, because we wanted that. We wanted them to be, like, be excited to be with their friends again and like have that competitive nature with like their friend groups and also with against like other people. Did you help facilitate uh, people joining teams or do they kind of self-organize? Um, yes and no. I think a lot of people, like the more, the shy members were like, oh, I don't, ha I can't do it. I don't have a friend. And then I would be like, oh, they need an extra person. Cause, <coughs> excuse me, we had like minimum amount, like three, maximum five. So we would try to like, I, I would like try to orchestrate, like you should be with them. You should be with them. Like they need a partner. You should do that. Um, but for the, the, for the most part, they were uh, self-organizing. Okay. Yeah. And how about for you, Lee? Did, were, did you use uh, teams or just individual climbers? Uh, no, you know, that's funny. Um, our bouldering league was a team event um, in person, uh, but to, to, be, to ask them to coordinate between each other was, seemed like it would complicate things even more. So all of our challenges were um, individual challenges. Um, there's always going to be um teams that are you where you have everybody on the team that's motivated to enter in their points and those are all the, always the teams that we see do well even if the climbers aren't the strongest climbers in the league um so that's uh it's funny that that you should mention that i hadn't even thought about asking uh for a team virtual uh situation so yeah and what are you guys planning on doing for your first uh league uh event joey uh teams or individual so first so we had just individuals for all employees first i think the next way we're going to roll out is to our climbing teams that we have we have five different teams of five to six kids per team and we're thinking for each um each instructor will be kind of running the app side of that and keeping track of all the kids through the app and um, just a way, so not necessarily just competing against each other because you have all the handicap options so you can make it fair. So it's like someone that's climbing real, real strong can climb against it, but a beginner it just depends on however you set it up. Um, that's gonna be our next step. That's probably gonna be next week or so. We're probably gonna have that started for our teams. And then, cause we're still trying to figure out cause there's so many options and we're just trying to figure out what's the best, what's gonna be, um, the most accommodating to everyone in our gym uh, for our first league probably will go on for about a month. And we're hoping maybe mid October, probably starting that. Okay. And that's a great segue into, um, you know, a discussion around scoring. Um, you were mentioning the, you know, different ways that people can handicap um, stronger climbers so you can have a level playing field. Um, are you guys using a VMAX system or how, how are you doing your scoring? So the first one, we just wanted to do top 10 climbs and just trying to figure out the system because um, we we're kind of like learning, you can set it up so some things um, can count towards, towards points, some things don't. Um, so just between us, we just wanted to do top 10 climbs for your session. So it's when you post a session on my climb, that is your session for that day. Or I think it's if you don't post your session over the span of like three days, that's technically still counts as like one session. Um, so it's just very important if you post it or not to make it so it's like, okay, I can only climb maybe for three days and I didn't get my 10 climbs in that first day. Leave your open session, come back the next day, throw that in there and then um, you can post it on then and then make sure that third day you climb your 10 climbs. So, so far, it's worked out pretty well. It went uh, pretty smooth. We've kind of noticed uh, some mistakes in the setup. It's kind of like easy where it's like, oh, I forgot to check that box. And then you can't change it after the fact, stuff like that. Um, so we're kind of just making sure that we, um, we're really just making um, like instruction books for whoever's going to be like setting it up. It's just kind of like a little quick how-to. It'd be like, you want this competition, you want this competition, you want this type of league. We're slowly just going through when we're just using um, our team and then the staff as mainly um, figuring a lot of that stuff out. So our incentive for staff was a $20 uh, Java Joe's gift card to go get some uh, some coffee and some muffins. So um, hopefully I win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Um, and for uh, I believe you had mentioned Lee, uh, uh, might have been Claire as well, but I, I'm pretty sure it was Lee uh, that you were also scoring or adding points in for different engagement um, opportunities, whether it's scoring an app or making a comment, sharing posts. Um, yeah, yeah, how are you um, integrating that? The the um, reciprocal benefits for us is kind of feedback on the routes themselves. And so with climbs, you know, we're, because it's our route management app as well, um, the more we kind of get comments on which routes uh, people like, um, how many stars they give it, you know, just for enjoyability or challenge or whatever, um, the better our kind of setting team can respond to those things too. Um, and climbs app, you can also, if you um, send the route, you can also suggest another grade. So you can, um, you can um, say, I thought this was a 5.9 plus instead of 5.10 um, and whatnot. Um, but um, yeah, there are uh, points for uh, adding pictures or videos to the routes, um, which is fairly easy to do on, on, on your phone if you kind of take a picture of it. Um, and um, following somebody else through the Climbs app. It's not quite a social media app, um, and I think the developer didn't want to um, kind of turn it into that because it would make it a lot more complicated. Um, although I think Venga is a lot more centered on um, adding people as friends and, and messaging uh, between different um, users and things like that. Um, but I will say that we have since um, started to add paper versions on the wall for new sets to rate the climbs and that's a lot more engaging for people than doing it through the app and so it'll just be a pen with a sheet say what do you think this should be rated before we even put a tag on the route so we did start doing that I know we're not the first ones to do that um, but people absolutely love doing that and it gives them something more to talk about and uh, feel gives them a little bit more sense of ownership of the grades and, and whatnot. Um, so yeah, there's kind of a lot that goes that goes into that, but um, for this virtual um, climbs league, instead of having categories for different difficulties um, via VMAX, which we would done we had done for a bouldering league, we just figured that engagement would just be the leveling of the playing field and so anybody that's using the app is going to be near the top of the leaderboard um, something that we did uh, we have kind of put as a motivator and to spread the word as well as um, one of our members suggesting putting tv screens just around the gym for different ads and um, updates and whatnot so we we do do have a leaderboard for the league um, that's posted on those tvs as well people see that and they'll ask uh, so that's kind of another motivator there. Cool. Yeah. It was that was this um, decision to focus on engagement rather than than climbs themselves. Um, was that based on reopening and not sharing, not not trying to make people extend past their <laughs> current fitness or ability levels? Yeah. Um, you know, the first month of reopening, even the strongest climbers, no matter how much you're training, no matter if you built a home wall. Um, they came in and they were they were just you know done in an hour or two so that people didn't have the endurance and they kind of lost a fair bit of fitness um so we didn't want to one kind of push people past their abilities like you said um and two we wanted newer climbers who were just coming into the gym um a, some sense of of uh, engagement and that they had kind of uh, a chance to win this thing cool. it's pretty demoralizing if You've, if it's for your first month climbing um, and X climber has a thousand points on day one, you know, so. And over at Corrado, Claire, um, yeah, since you guys are doing teams, what kind of scoring system are you putting in place? So we, um, we were also using the, the VMAX scoring system. And I think that this was the most confusing part. Um, and because everything else on like the Venga app, like worked really well. But I think that a lot of our members didn't understand that VMAX wasn't, didn't mean the hardest thing you've ever done. It meant like um, what would take you like three or four tries to do. So not your flash level, but like maybe like a little bit above your flash level. So we did have like a little bit of issues with that where people would put in the hardest thing they've ever done and then their scoring would be all messed up. But um, this is where like 
um, Bruin and Court, who are the uh, developers of the Venga app, did like amazingly with, they were on the app a lot. They would just, like see the notifications and uh, a lot of the, um, the members would like in the comments or like in the chat be like, I'm having issues with this. And um, either like Bruin or Court would be like, I can fix that for you. Or they taught like us how to fix it where we were able to like adjust their VMAX. So um, it was, it was, I, I, I like, I loved using the app, the Venga app because Bruin and Court were always like, like so uh, available to help. Um, which made like any bumps in the road, like, like turn into to no bumps at all because they were, they were there to help. Um, but, uh, the VMAX would like, they, on a team scale, it would just, whatever you would do, um, would add into an average of like what the team had done. So if you were, um, if you were doing consistently well, and it, then you would be like, kind of like bringing your team up. Well, if someone wasn't climbing, that was bringing the team down. So a lot of times, like I would see like people bickering, we're like, you need to just climb more, bro. Um, cause like that person not climbing would like bring the score down. Um, this was also like where it was maybe easier to cheat because people would put their V max to like something lower. Um, and then like, they would just get a ton of points because they were like maybe flashing that you'd get bonus points, um, for flashing something, um, or like first go second go. So, um, that was like, I, because it was our first time doing that, we weren't, we weren't ready to like, to, to like combat cheaters but we also like noticed it was maybe like one or two people and then I'd have like members be like I know for a fact that he's cheating I'm like I don't know what to do about that sorry but like once we like let's finish this and then we'll try it again and we'll see like what we can do um but for the most part like everybody was very honest about like what their their vmax was and and identifying a problem and like asking the developers for help or asking like staff for help so yeah yeah, and I'll, I'll throw this question out to, to all of you guys, whoever wants to jump on it first. Um, uh, it's, you know, a couple of you guys already had experience with doing some uh, at-home uh, hangboard leagues uh, during the closures. Uh, are you, have you thought about or have you decided not to, um, for any specific reason, not included any like at-home or outside climbing in in the whole scoring system and league format, um, since you know everyone's got the capacity challenges at, at their gym, um, I, I think some of these apps do facilitate like scoring the the outdoor climbs and other other climbs that you could do um, either at, at your home wall or just on a home hangboard. Yeah, go for it, Joey. I know that we plan on since we're still kind of digging through the app right now. We plan on. Um, making it just so a lot of people that don't feel comfortable being in the gym right now kind of feel included too, where they don't want to be in our confined space, even though we have a ton of uh, COVID things in place right now. Um, but we really want to open it up for anyone that just wants. It looks like we lost Joey for a minute there. Um, we'll, we'll come back to you and uh, I'll maybe pass that over to you, Lee, while we let Joey reconnect the join just so we kind of get our name a little bit more out there in the communities oh yeah I'll, I'll let you go for it uh lee um yeah being that we're in south louisiana um the yeah. nearest climbs are a good six to eight hour drive um so um so it would be awesome in theory um um and uh and we are kind of the only um the only gym in uh, Baton Rouge at the moment. Um, it would be nice to kind of coordinate uh, with another gym potentially. We, we talked about doing um, inter-gym leagues too. And uh, when we did our hangboard league, we kind of um, actually coordinated with a, a gym in Lafayette. And so we had um, actually in New Orleans versus, uh, New Orleans versus Baton Rouge was the kind of inter-gym uh, uh, competition for our hangboard league. Uh, and that went, it was really fun. They blew us out of the water, um, but uh, all in good fun. You know, it's kind of the most engaged members of the community um, between the two cities. Um, so, yeah, uh, ideally we would, we would be in, down to involve some outdoor climbing. Um, yeah, yeah, if it was around. <laughs> Yeah, well, that, that's a great idea too, just like the inner gym rivalries, and especially like in this virtual age, um, yeah, you know, that could really be anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world, right, pretty easily. Uh, some Probably some really fun ideas to play with there. Yeah, I know that um, Kaya um, and I think Vertical... Um, Vertical Life. 
vertical life, um, those two both have um, a load of different kind of bank of outdoor climbs as well that you can involve. So um, some of our members have actually dropped a suggestion or two um, to kind of check out or try out um, some other some other scoring apps and um, that kind of thing. So they're they are aware of them for sure. Oh, cool. Yeah, and how about how about for you, Claire? Um, have you guys toyed around with the idea of adding in points for other types of uh, activities or other climbs, indoor, outdoor? We have not, but um, I like I, I was exploring the Vanga app earlier, and I did see that they do have um where you can connect your Mountain Project account to the Vanga app. So it's not like they don't they don't have the ability to to score outside boulders, but you can like part you can like sync your app to that. So it does kind of like like a, a union, a joining of two apps, which is pretty cool. And like, how about on the hangboard side, um, just for people to get, uh, to stay engaged while they're at home, if they're, yeah, if they're not for, able to for get that one, time. for that one we did where there was like the, um, the like just pull up or push up or like run a mile, like those kind of like little bonus um, things that if you, for, uh, I think we did like the, the 10 or 14 day hangboard thing. And um, for that one, they you like you need a rest day so on those days they did have the like go run a mile if you can or like do like your max amount of push-ups or pull-ups um so in that sense that we we did do like um outside or um not just climbing things you're rewarded for with points but um but not a uh, outside climbing so okay um let's see We've got a couple questions uh here from the audience um and, and this one is uh for for you lee i think uh since you've had a chance to use both uh climbs and vanga um uh yeah people were kind of curious like what the similarities and differences there um sounds like you, ultimately you're, you stuck with climbs once you reopened because uh, you'd already had all of your roots in there and were managing uh things on the root side yeah, you know, I think the the customer interface or the member interface is kind of the, the biggest difference there. Um, there are um, certain things that, that might be easier on one that are uh, a little bit more difficult to find on the other. Um, but, you know, in the end, um, I think it's just, um, it's just introducing the members to it and, and helping them feel comfortable with where all the features are. Um, so, you know, you can make it work, um, which with, with whichever one you have, um, as long as you, I think, again, the hardest part is getting people to actually use it and engage with it to get feedback. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, Claire, it sounded like you're using Vanga on the root management side as well. Are you finding like, the same challenge of, uh, people getting you that feedback through the app? Or are you still doing any sort of paper scoring on the wall like Lee is? Yeah, we've never done the paper scoring before. Um, I've always felt that it gave people a little bit too much power where um, they felt like, it, like it's, um, I, like, I like the app because it kind of like encourages people to like first like use the app, but then to like, because you're using the app, you get like this special bonus of like giving the routes that are your opinion. And, um, and I like, I loved it because of that. Like I loved knowing what people thought. Um, one of the most challenging things was that it was the same like five people who would always vote. So I was like, I want more people. I don't want just like you guys. Um, so that again was like a little bit more challenging, but that just like uh, more, I had to like advertise it more like, like, hey, are you doing this when you like, cause the, the it takes a little bit longer when you log your climbs to like, oh yeah, like this is my thoughts and comments. Like this is what I would think about this. Um, in, and it's easier to just be like, I did it, and then you're done. So I kind of like had to be like, hey, are you using it like this? Like, did you know that you could be helpful like this? So, um, but on the, uh, like the route sitters end of the app, like you were able to see like um, people's comments, like what they would like rate things, like out of three stars, um, the, the grade that they thought the climb was. Um, and then it also like allowed, which on the route sitters end, when you put up the climbs, like this is like, you were able to say like the style um, like the terrain and um, the movement that the boulder was going. So you could also kind of see just like, like, oh, I have like a lot of um, like sloper compression boulders up. Like maybe I should not have like that many in the next set. Um, and what I really wanted, I, I asked Court and Brune, I was like, can we do color? Because I, I like to see the, like how many colors that we had and like, 
are we like low on orange boulders? And I, maybe that's like kind of a, a weird thing to want, but um, they kind of had everything and I was like, no, I want colors. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And how, how are you seeing things on the, on that root management side? Lee, have a pretty similar experience or are, are using this pretty heavily to help inform some of those uh, decisions? Um, yeah, you know, um, the backend manager data entry for climbs is really nice. I can see graphs of how many routes are in the gym, um, spread across, um, all the different colors and terrains and different, um, areas. Um, but, um, as far as the, the numbers of different specific types of routes, um, that's a little bit more feel and listening to feedback from members. And so, um, so I'll adjust um, having more of uh, certain grades. And as our um, membership has grown and gotten stronger just in the last three years, we've had to kind of increase our range on the harder end of intermediate to harder end of boulders relative to here. And, and climbs too, you know, like we've got members now that can climb every route in the gym. And so I'm increasing, I'm adding more routes on the top end um, to continue to challenge them as well. Um, but from a um, data uh, perspective, I can go and see all the feedback for each specific setter over their entire career of setting routes, um, which kind of gives me a sense of, um, of what I can challenge the setters with too. Yeah. And so uh, since you guys are keeping with uh, some paper scoring, um, are you guys then going and entering that data into into climbs yourselves to just to help track everything in that one system? Um, yeah, you know, um, I can't go back and, and add how many people on the paper thought that this was a 10C instead of 10D. Um, I do kind of file them and kind of hang on to it. Mm -hmm. um, so I just put it in a little binder that I've got um, route setting wise. Um, but, um, but I, I just kind of make mental notes here and there and I'll share it on our kind of um, our setting route set or group message. So they all kind of see it as well. And, um, you know, that setter um, will be like, okay, well, a lot of people thought um, that this was harder or easier. So maybe I can adjust my next um, route accordingly. All right. Uh, we've got another question from the audience, and you know, thanks, guys, for keeping uh, those questions coming. Uh, feel free to add them into that Q&A box as they come up. Um, and this this one's a, a, a tough one with this. It's still, you know, pretty new technology, I think, for a lot of a lot of uh, climbers, even though it's been around um, a little while now. Um, and this is, uh, you know, we've, we've touched on a couple times that it's hard to get people to actually use and engage with these apps. Um, and this person says, you know, they've had a hard time with that as well. Um, what, what kinds of extra incentives are you guys, uh, doing or training or coaching are you doing with your, with your customers to help them, uh, start using the apps a bit more and, and trying to encourage that engagement? I know you've got, um, that built into your scoring, which is a pretty good strategy, I think, Lee. Um, any other tips that you might have for people out there? Um, you know, I, I guess the main thing I would say is, try to make it part, uh, try to make it cool and make it part of the culture. You know, if, if there's a lot more people that are talking about it, then a lot more people are going to start getting interested in it too. Um, so, um, I'll, when it's quiet, I'll have the staff show me all their climbs and stuff and say, okay, do you know how to really work this app? And do you know, all the features of it, can you explain it to customers? Um, the members who I know really well, um, I will try to get, um, their input and see if they're using it. Um, so it's more, it's more about kind of talking to people um, to, to spread the word and get them to disseminate it a little bit better. Yeah. Um, we, can, we can post about it all we want. It seems um, that it's a slow trickle if it's only social media. So. Right. It sounds like that was the, what was really successful for you as well, Claire, right? Just getting out there on the pads and uh, <laughs> just force of will. <laughs> yeah, like, give me your phone. Let me download this for you. <laughs> um, we also had to, because uh, I, I was the one working with um, the Venga app mostly, like, I knew a lot. So when people 
um, like other members would ask staff, um, like front desk staff, the front desk staff wouldn't know. So another big thing was to like educate the staff and be like, I was like, time to record a tutorial, like everyone get out your phone, we're gonna like learn how to do this so that they could also be in the know and know how to do it. And, and uh, like Lee was saying, and also Joey was doing this too, like we had like the staff do the parts of the competition where we were like, well, you shouldn't win the prizes, so don't do like amazingly. But um, we did have them like doing it so that they could be part of it and see how it goes um, while also like learning and then also engaging like the rest of the members. So um, educating like the staff and then the intern, they would like go out and like also educate everybody else. So. Cool. Um, I've got a fantastic question here from Mickey. Um which is something we, uh, or I've kind of failed to touch on earlier, was uh, the length of time that you guys are running your leagues. And if you guys have tried any single day comps um, using these apps yet. Um, well, uh, we'll start with you, Lee. <laughs> how, long, how long is your league running for? Yeah, um, our current league, so we've had an August challenge of 31 days of August. Um, and our current one, we extended for two months. So we started September 1st and we're going all the way till Halloween. Um, we have not really done any single day comps um, simply because we're trying to keep people spaced out and we have a, um, a max capacity in the building at any one time. And so um, even when we go back to in-person comps, we're probably gonna try to spread out the number of people actually participating across the whole week. Um, and in fact, um, even though they're not using the scoring app, um, that's what um, LSU uh, University, uh, Louisiana State University is doing with their club now is giving their team a full week to kind of compete um, to get points. And so it doesn't look like we'll do any single day um, comps anytime soon based on the social distancing. Yeah. Um, and how about for you guys, Claire, have you discussed that at all, uh, single day comps? Um, no. And I, I think that, yeah, like Lee was saying, like, this is probably not the time to do that just because we do have, you know, a capacity. Um, but for our, our bouldering league was, um, spread out over a month. Um, so every time there would be every week, there'd be a, a new set. And um, that's where like the, you were allowed to compete was once a new set opened, so like on a particular wall, those boulders would be open for, for the climbing. And that's how you would get the points is by climbing the new set. And then um, the new set would be like open for a week. So even though like in the next week, a new area of the wall would be opened, you would uh, be allowed to like still go back and like do those ones that you haven't done yet. Um, but so, so it did like every, we had like, like five sections of the wall. So it was kind of like on the, like maybe a little bit more of a month where like every week a new um, section would like open up for the, the league. And then in the end, like count up all the points and see who won. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, and I think I missed it, Lee, but uh, do you say your league uh, ran for a month as well? Yeah. Yeah. Our first version um, was 31 days. Okay. Yeah. And it seems like it's in like previous. Yeah. Sorry. Um, somebody asked if there were youth leagues as well. And I was, um, yeah. I was thinking how great of a idea that uh, idea that might be just to engage some younger climbers as well. Um, we haven't done that. We have a youth team, um, but we've never run just a youth league um, that's outside of like a one day USA climbing uh, competition. Do you, do you guys see uh, younger climbers or people on your team just participating in, in your league um, on their own? No, I mean, not specifically. Um, I will um, kind of show them uh, that they can see all the climbs in the gym and we kind of use it for um, part of their um, part of their tick list and uh, route management for the team. Um, but I haven't seen any any kids kind of take it up on their own and, and run with it. Okay. Yeah, how about uh, your youth uh, climbers, Claire? Um, are they participating in, in the league? Yeah, we um we highly encouraged our youth team to to join, but we understand that like um maybe their phone access is not like uh, maybe their parents are like not okay with that or or whatever. Um, but we did like if I I told I like heavily advertised it on our youth team or like this would be a cool thing and you guys can compete against like adults and um we did and because like the VMAX is kind of um 
you are able to compete against people of different levels. So, like you could be an intermediate climber, but still like compete against an advanced or a beginner. They were, um, I think a lot of their hesitations are like, I'm not as strong as like a tall person, you know? So I was like, well, I, I was like very, um, I tried to like get them to understand that like, you don't have to be like that strong in order to compete. It's just for fun. Um, so I think one of, one of the teams that we did have was all of our um, like five youth team kids. So we didn't get a lot of them to do it, but like, some of them did. So. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. How about for, for you, Joey, over in Santa Fe? Um, are you planning on rolling us out to your youth team at all? Yes. So that's going to be the first or the next step after um, we're finished up going through all of the staff leagues and everything. The next is going to be youth for sure. Cool. Um, and then, you know, we'd, we'd missed you a, a little bit uh, earlier, and I was just kind of curious on that um, on that question of, uh, since you have so many options uh, in, in your general vicinity, how you guys are planning, or if you are planning at all, melding in any out-of-gym activities into your scoring or, or league system, whether it's outdoor climbs or other fitness activities. I think what we're going to try to... Um send out there first is kind of what our classes were like with the hangboarding and like the level one level two level three and kind of have something going on um with more of the training side at home um but we definitely want to just use this app as much as we can all right well i just wanted to uh, give you guys a big thanks for for joining us today and sharing your um experiences with this. Uh, we'll keep um, running these community calls uh, for, for free, um, for, probably indefinitely, I imagine, um, on a, at least a monthly basis. Uh, for, for more um, information, more uh, conversations, uh, feel free to jump into the Survive and Thrive workshop. Uh, that's still uh, available to, to gym folks out there uh, for the next few months. It'll be through the beginning of next year uh, that, you can, that you can jump on there. Um, and those on-demand tickets are still available. So um, love, to, love to see you guys uh, continuing this discussion over there or just with us in general. Um, and we're always here for you at the CWA as well. So um, you can just reach any of the staff here directly with any questions and we'll try to get you the, uh, uh, the best answer we can or connect you to the right person to get that answer for you. Um, so thanks everyone for, for joining us today. We really appreciate having you here and we'll see you on the next community call or over on the Survive and Thrive workshop. Have a great day.